today we're going to perform a surgical procedure on the LTE 5280. Right here I have a keyboard that I purchased on eBay for $8. And the idea here is to restore function to the track point device. The track point in my LTE has failed through natural causes, I assume. But I don't know for sure. The first thing we're going to do is try to clean up this keyboard, the new one, a little bit. Obviously it's not brand new. And from the looks of it, it has some possible cigarette discoloration, or discoloration from exposure to nicotine or excessive sunlight. Hmm. Well, I'm going to clean this up first and then I'll continue on. Before we continue on, we're going to pull off the old keyboard first. So I'm going to take the old compact and we're going to flip her upside down. We're going to remove the floppy drive. The hard, I'm um, sorry, the other hard drive. As well as the battery. This is really just to, just to be sure that we don't uh, hurt anything process. Okay. So now we need to remove a couple of screws. One is the keyboard. And they need to be removed with a flat blade screwdriver. Not that one. I'm going to try to find a better one here. I know I've got a better one. Okay, this is a better screwdriver, so we're going to use this one. By better, I mean bigger. Bigger is better. Better is bigger. Ideally, I would be using a Torx driver, but I don't have one here at my house, so at least not the right size. Got plenty of uh, bits and whatnot, but not what I need. For do this job so oh that'll come out of the wash All right. oh for God's sakes I used a damn it actually would that be a problem that would be a problem turns out I, I there's a torx screw on the back of the machine and I don't have screwdriver I didn't take it out so <laughs> that just ruined my day. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no, we're good. I got it out with a flat blade that just fits perfectly in that screw head. So we also have some uh, screws in the front of the machine towards the keyboard home rest. Take those out. Be careful when you're working on these machines because doors like this tend to break off real easily. And I want to do everything I can to not break that door off. Because that's one of the reasons why this machine is in the collectible category because it still has its doors and it has no discoloration on any of the plastic. So replacing that door may not be an option. All right, we're almost there. Oh, there we go, our screw fell out finally. Sweet. Alright, now. I always work on either a static mat, which is what I should be using, or some kind of a piece of cloth, like a towel. And that's to protect the laptop from any damage, scratches, what have you. What have you? Okay, we got our front panel off. Now we need to remove the keyboard. It's held in by two additional screws in the back. And uh, typical of older laptops, um, there are actual ground straps that are screwed, or that are um, held on by banjo connectors uh, to the keyboard assembly. A little bit of information that you may or may not know. Now, 
in order to make a computer um, comp are compliant with certain FCC emission standards, like radio frequency emissions, manufacturers have to figure out a way to insulate the machines electronically or to uh, prevent the not only the intake but the emissions of EMF or radio waves. And to do that, they use either metal shielding or metallic paint. In the case of laptops, or most laptops, even today, um, met metallic paint is still heavily used to uh, prevent EMF leakage. And you'll notice that this paint here has like a kind of a dull metallic finish to it, and that's because it really, in fact, is metal. It I believe it's, it contains aluminum or alumina, which is a, uh, or aluminum oxide or something like that. And that is how they get away with that, with making a laptop out of plastic. Otherwise, laptops would be made out of metal wouldn't really go over so well. Actually, <laughs> funny, um, the MacBooks are made of metal for that very reason. Well, not that reason, but that certainly is part of the uh, reasoning. Now, this is, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> for a second there, I'm like, oh crap, these won't be compatible. Well, the connectors are different. Oh dear. That may be a problem. The connectors, as it turns out, are in fact different on the, um, the trackpad connectors. So, or uh, AccuPoint connectors are different. That may pose a problem. That may pose a bit of a problem for us. And this discoloration is more noticeable than I anticipated. I may actually. I mean, I can see it. You probably can't, but the uh, keys on the newer keyboard have less wear on them, but they are most certainly yellowed, where the original keys are not yellowed. Um, well, that could be interesting. The part numbers are are the same, for the most part. Hmm. Manufacturing dates, let's see. April 1996 for the new one. January of 1997 for the, for the, I'm sorry, for the new one. The old one is April of 96. All right, so that's a bit of a difference there. Bolt patterns appear to be the same. Though the new one is missing one of the latch assemblies. I could probably, I could, I could figure that out easily. Hmm. I wonder if there's any way I can just replace the track uh, point unit because the old keyboard is actually in really good condition. So I think I'm going to try that, try my luck there. But I mean, they both have stuck keys. One of the characteristics of the LTE keyboard is that when they start to wear down, the keys get a little bit difficult to press if you don't hit them dead center. They have a, a condition that I like to call floating key syndrome, where you could be typing along and the keys start to float because you're not hitting them dead on. They don't press down. I mean, I'm not going to be writing a novel on this damn thing, but I would like my keyboard to be nice and functional. I'm going to pause the video and figure out what I'm going to do. Okay, so a decision has been made and the work has been carried out. What I ended up doing was I took the entire assembly off the keyboard. Here's the old one. Now this is what the actual track point, AccuPoint, eraser head mouse, you name it. This is what it is. It's basically a um it's a it's a pressure sensor mounted in a metal case. And uh once I get this working, we can take this apart and see what it looks like inside. But this is what they look like out of the machine, well, this particular unit. This is the interface board. 
while we're here and we're discussing the issue at hand, when I had my LTE back in 2002, I had to um, repair this board. See, what happened was, because mine was used in a publishing company and the editor of the magazine used this particular machine I had excessively for three years, the mouse click button stopped working. The, um, it would be the left, the right, left click button stopped working. Inside this assembly, this button, is a tiny copper dome. Actually, probably made of a, an alloy, a brass of some kind. And what happened was, is that dome had wore out and it cracked, so it no longer made contact. What I did was I disassembled an old Mitsumi PS2 mouse, and I took that little dome out of that mouse. It happened to have the exact same type of switch. And I took the button, or the, the little dome, out of that mouse and planted it into this assembly. And that's how I fixed the mouse button on mine. Boy, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to keep the original keyboard, which had no discoloration whatsoever. And I feel that that decision uh, is best. So we're going to put this back together. It turned out, by the way, that the connector was the exact same pinout. In fact, it was the exact same connector which um, surprised me, but I was looking at it at the wrong angle, I guess, and it just looked different to me. No biggie. Put this back together. Come on. I'm trying like hell to get this. This is difficult because there's no room to work, and whenever you touch that connector, it wants to close up. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. That laptop gave me more... Actually, you know, I, I didn't really learn much on that laptop, but I did learn a lot of quick fixes. Yeah, I guess that's what I got out of it. A lot of quick fixes and Mickey Mouse fixes um, to get that thing going right again. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a battle. And as soon as I got it running perfectly, I let a friend take it over. He wanted to install Office on it. No, he didn't. I wanted to, I wanted to put Office on it, but I didn't have a CD-ROM drive. And he had this brilliant idea of just, I mean, not a bad idea at all, but um, to insert it in his uh, drive, the, the hard drive into his drive dock. At the time, it was a... Uh, hard drive interface. I'm sorry, I'm concentrating on this, but yeah, he, he threw it into a, into a drive dock, copied off his setup files onto it, and well, when he went to go put the thing back together again, he put the hard drive in while the machine was running, taking out the entire IDE bus. I could kill him. I was so mad. Like, you have got to be freaking kidding me. So at least I know how to kill an LTE. That's a that's a valuable skill right there. Come on. Here we go. Yes. Yes. All right. Got that plugged in. And I got an email. All right. By the way, I I don't have an iPhone by choice. My my employer made me get one. They paid for it, of course. I'm like, I don't want an iPhone. I want a simple cell phone. So, I'm like, I'm okay, whatever. So I reluctantly agreed, not that I had a choice. When your boss forces you to get an iPhone, you don't turn it down. So, I just have a natural hatred of smartphones, you know. It's like, in, it's in my blood. I just hate the damn thing so much. Anyway. 
all seriousness aside, where's my big screwdriver? I'm going to put the center screw in first, just to get it placed in there. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's not sitting flat. Uh, I don't know why. cable is misrouted. No, no, it really isn't. Well, it could be better. Let's see if we can do a better job routing that cable. This is so this is the tedious part of the job, you know. This is the part that can can really make this a bastard. Oh damn. There we go. There we go. That's what we want to see. Yes. Yes. Right. These old ones are fun to work on because they're so easy. I mean, they really are. I think one of the most difficult laptops I've ever worked on now, mind you, I have worked on thousands, easily, laps, I mean, literally thousands of machines by now. I mean, I've been doing this kind of work since I was 10 years old. No, 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 no. I was 12 when I started working on, um, on computers on a regular basis. I started out at the age of 12. Back then, the... Um, and nowadays, when you, when, you, when you find a used computer in a computer store, or in the dump, or whatever, it's typically a Pentium 4. Some Pentium 3s are still out there, but mostly Pentium 4s, and um, Celerons, and, you know, just machines that are anywhere from 12 to 5 years old, right? Now, in 1997... Um, I would have been 13, and the most computers that you found, you know, in the trash or that were being disposed of in one way or the other, they were typically 286s, um, a lot of, a lot of early, um, 8088s. You know, from like 1984 and that era. Sorry, I'm blocking the camera. I tend to do that. So they were mostly machines of that generation, and which typically meant that they were either DOS or Windows 3.1 systems. And because used computers still had value, I mean, really, it didn't matter what it was, it was still worth something. Um, there was a lot of money to be made fixing old computer equipment. Now, laptops, it didn't matter what it was. I guess laptops more so than desktops, but laptops had value. It didn't matter what it was. It was worth something. And you could not touch a functioning laptop for anything less than 200 bucks. I mean, it, it could be, it could be a, a, f a damn Super Sport, um, Zenith Super Sports, those were worth, those were worth about, you know, probably 150, 200 bucks at the time. Because portable computing was not taken for granted as it is today. You know, today, did, I mean, seriously, today they're worthless. You know, they're more than a year or two old, it seems. Nobody wants them. You know, All right, that's a gross exaggeration, but you get the idea. Yeah. Here we go. All right, we're 
clipping it together. Clipping is good. So anyway, as I was saying, so whenever I found a portable computer, it was pretty rare. My first laptop was a Zenith lunchbox. It wasn't a laptop, it was a lunchbox. There was a big difference. It was in the portable computer class. It was not a laptop. It was not... It, it was more of a... More of a portable desktop, if you will. And that thing was probably worth about 50 bucks. So I guess I was... Yeah, I guess I was a little inaccurate when I gave you those figures, but... A, la a machine like that would have been worth an easy 50 bucks in functioning condition. Unfortunately, mine had a problem where once it warmed up, it froze up and it had some... It had what looked like video memory problems. But it was mine and I didn't care. <laughs> it was my very own laptop, or I called it a laptop, but it was not a laptop. That was, that was actually a dump find. My neighbor was a huge dump picker and still is to this day. The guy that used to live next door to me. Or my family. And uh, one of these days I'll do a video of this guy. He was crazy. Um, I mean, this guy made a killing. You know, very unusual man. Very, very simple, very unusual. You know, not, not the... Let's say, he, let's put it this way, he was not a, um, not a genius, but he was, in a way, you know, he was a, still is, <laughs> I say was, but no, he still is, hasn't changed a bit, but he got me my, um, he's the one who actually got me into repairing electronics, because he'd bring home VCRs, he'd bring home computers of all kinds, he'd bring home, um, lawnmowers, that's how I got into lawnmower repair at the age of nine years old. Because he had an unlimited supply of junk lawnmowers that I could freely basically grab and tinker with. And then he would turn around and sell the damn things after I fixed them. So he was smarter than I thought. And I was the dumb one. But anyway. Next rule, or next uh, lesson, kids, is don't let people take advantage of you. <laughs> no, we're good friends. We've been friends for over 23 years. And uh, the guy's older than my dad, but he's such a great guy. But if you let him take advantage of you, oh, he'll take you for a ride. Watch out. People that are street smart like that, they know what they're doing. Now this screw here, this screw is being difficult. I'm not sure why. Is it the wrong one? It probably is the wrong screw. I bet you it's the wrong damn screw. No, no. No, no, it's the right one. Those little short ones, those go to the keyboard. Uh, towards the front. Now these right here, not so much. So as I was saying, my um, poor lighting, bad work environment, and you're going to scratch something. I didn't scratch it, though. you got to be careful. I have the wrong tools, first of all. Kids, use the right tools. <laughs> but unfortunately, all my good tools are at work, where I have no access to them right now. You know? Alright, I'm getting resistance on this screw, and I don't like it. I'm going to have to pull it back apart again. This isn't right. So, yeah, I'm getting some resistance here, and I'm not sure why. I'm looking in the screw hole, and I don't see anything around. Poke a screwdriver through it. Yeah, there's nothing back there. It's obviously... You know what? I think the threads on the screw are to blame in this scenario. But it doesn't really matter. I'm going to have to pull this sucker apart very soon anyway. I've got to put a new CMOS battery in it. Which means I have to find a CMOS battery for it. Okay, yeah, we're good. That yeah, screw's in there. Yippee! Okay. Alright. Alright.
Alrighty. Now I can close it. Now we're going to put the front screws in there. God, this is going to be the most boring video I've ever made. Actually, you know, I, I, I don't think so. I think I can do worse. Try me. I'm just letting the camera roll. I don't do this very often. I usually edit this crap out, so don't get used to it. Bantering along. Anyway, so we're going to put these screws in. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. Um, my old LTE in the... Did you know that the LTE laptop that I was talking about in my last two videos is actually, and I didn't think about this until just the other day, but it was the first laptop that I had ever used on the internet. Um, I'll tell you about it. Let me tell you about it. Oh yeah. Well, how did that go? First I'll play it, and then I'll tell you about it. That was uh, Miles Davis, I think, used to say that. Um, yes. So this laptop that I had originally belonged to a publishing company, and I know the editor of one of their publications. Good friend of mine. It's his dad. Known him for years. He um, he had this laptop. Now this was in 1997, and he had this brand new. And my my friend uh, Doug was all excited about this thing. He's like, yeah, my dad's got a laptop from work. It's brand new, and it's so fast, and it's awesome, and it's like, like whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's go see it. <laughs> so, he, um, I saw his dad. He was at the, working at the kitchen table. He's worked at his kitchen table for over 20 years. That's his, that's his environment. That's his workspace. You know, don't question the genius. Just let him do his work. He's a good, good writer. Good technical writer. I can't tell you much about him because privacy reasons, but he um he had this laptop on the kitchen table and it was on he was using Lycos search engine at the time. This was in nineteen ninety seven, so he was using Lycos, which was fairly new at the time. And uh and I got to, to play with it a little bit and do some internet searches and look up some websites. I'm like, wow, this is so awesome, you know, technology is great and this laptop is sweet, you know, that kind of thing. And uh little did I know within a couple of years that laptop would wind up in my possession where it would ultimately die. A terrible death. God damn it. I'm gonna to have to give my friend a call, the one who killed the laptop. It wasn't it wasn't the guy I'm talking about, it was somebody else. Like, hey, remember that LTE you killed? And I, you know, I tried to work out a deal with him. He had a compact portable sitting in his basement. I'm like, tell you what, you killed my laptop. Give me that old, that old compact portable. He wouldn't do it. You know, he was gonna save it. You suck. His parents later threw that thing away when he went to college. Damn. You can never trust your parents. Don't ever trust your parents. Yeah. I'm only kidding. Trust your parents as long as they're trustworthy. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that that really upset me greatly. But we have the new, not the new keyboard, just the track point device alone. I'm going to save that other keyboard for parts. Now I just need to find the bag with the power supply. There it is. And we're going to give this sucker a test. And if you stay tuned to a future video that I'm going to publish very soon, um, I purchased an external PCM CIA CD-ROM drive. Yes? You heard me. An external... Well, I think you get the gist. Um, the thing was, here's the deal, um, I had to find a way to transfer data to the laptop, specifically data from CD-ROMs, and I thought that the fastest way to do so would be with a CD-ROM drive. Now, there are almost zero CD-ROM drives available for this model. They existed. They were made. They were I know they exist. Unfortunately, I can't find one. 
working or not. So, all right, yeah, see my clock battery is toasty. It's not saving the uh, time and date info. So we're gonna run computer setup and we're gonna test our new track point. F10, then you hit F1 to continue. All right, ooh, it's working. Let's check the buttons. Boom, boom. Boom. Cool. Well, the BIOS likes it. Let's see if Mikey likes it. He'll eat anything. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see. Sweet. Now I gotta work on that damn clock battery. That's going to be another... I have to take this all back apart again. Why do I even bother screwing this thing together? I mean, really, that's just insane. I won't do a video of the clock battery. You've already got an idea as to how to disassemble the stupid thing, so... I don't need to show that. Now, the one that was in here originally had a flaw where if you dragged it from the right to the left, it would do this. Mm. Let me do that again. That's what it did. And um, and that was bad. That was something that we don't like. We don't like to see that. So, now that it's fixed, let's take... We're going to save this board. This is a good board, I think. And uh, we have a bad doohickey. Um, you'll notice that I've already removed the cat's tongue um, nub and I've actually put that on to the new one because the new one had a worn out nub. Nobody likes a worn out nub. We have the wrong screwdriver. That's right. We're going to take these three screws out. Wink. Boink. No, I pre-boinked. There we go. Boink. And one more. Boink. Okay, what do we got? Just a backer plate. Nothing really to show there. Then we've got... Um, it actually looks like it's riveted together to some degree. Just a probably a, a very light pressure sensor inside this device. That's all it is. And um, I wish I could got it off. Alright, let's see what lurks within. Really nothing visible. <laughs> Go figure. That's it, man. It's just a, a flex circuit. And uh, there's just little pressure sensors inside there. That's all. Nothing uh, Nothing really to write home about. I don't know what I was expecting to see. Maybe the entrance to Narnia, but hey, I'll take what I can get. That may actually be a good part, and this board could be bad, but you know what? I don't have uh, time to go diagnosing all that crap. As long as it works, I'm happy. So let's go ahead and play SimCity 2000. I'm glad I got it working. That just made my day, right? I have a very boring life. Penal colony? See, this is built in the Sims. I didn't make this city. Let's see how this works. Hey, where's my sound? I swear to God. The sound is gone. What the hell? I just noticed the sound card driver didn't load. Are you kidding me? Really? Ah. Oh. I don't believe it. All right.
Let's see if it's disabled in BIOS for some reason. I don't believe that. Huh. You know, sometimes you think you know a computer and then that happens. Alright, we do have to have set up. I don't believe that. After all I've done for this machine, <laughs> the sound doesn't work now. Ah, you've got to be kidding me. It's enabled. Un-effing believable. I fix one problem and another problem occurs. You know, you can't win. Let's see what we can do. I'm sure we can get it going. Initially, it was an issue with the uh, driver being all messed. But I haven't had any issues getting the sound to work since, so that's what really grinds my gears. Alright, I think I heard the audio, there it goes. You know what, I, I give, <laughs> I give, I, I don't know what to say, it worked that time. I do need to replace the clock battery, that's probably important, but I, I don't think it's that important. <sighs> anyway, where was I? Sim City. Going back to some city. Right. Air crash. Maybe. Oh no. Why do they cheer? They love me so dearly, even though I tried to kill them. And then the crash killed 1,500 people. Ah, well, anyway. Well, folks, I think that pretty much concludes our video. Um, stay tuned. There'll be more stuff. Um, very boring stuff, but there'll be stuff. Until then.